The dazzling colors of the aurora have bewildered humans for most of our time on this planet. But what exactly is happening up there to create those stunning colors in the northern lights? Let's get a bit nerdy. Hey everyone, I'm Ron Murray with the Aurora Chasers, and today we're going to cover one of the most common questions we get about the Aurora. What is creating those colors in the Northern Lights? But to understand this, we first need a general idea of what causes the Northern Lights. I'm not going to go too in-depth about that in this video. We'll actually cover that in a future video. So if you guys want to have a better understanding of what's creating the Northern Lights themselves, make sure you hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss that. Those beautiful colors we see in the night sky from here on Earth begin on our sun. The sun releases plasma energy, typically from solar flares. That energy is sent hurling out through space in the form of electrons and protons towards our planet. The interaction of these charged particles with the gases in our atmosphere is what creates the glowing lights we call the auroras. The process is similar to how neon lights work. When molecules and atoms become excited by electrons, they charge up and release that energy as photons, or light. The color that that neon gives off depends on the gas mixture inside the tube. Just as there's different gas mixtures in different neon light tubes, we have different mixtures of gases in our atmosphere at different altitudes. The Earth's atmosphere that you and I breathe is about 80% molecules of nitrogen and about 20% molecules of oxygen. And that composition stays pretty much the same as you go up from the surface of the Earth until you get into the auroras, which are usually around 60 miles, 110, 120 kilometers above the surface of the Earth, the very brightest parts of the aurora. The atmosphere doesn't change a lot. It's still molecules of nitrogen and oxygen until it then from that altitude on up say to 120 miles 60 to 120 miles by that altitude of 120 miles most everything's are atoms of oxygen and atoms of nitrogen and a few other things so the aurora is in a transitional zone and but you are in to begin with the same atmosphere you have at the surface of the earth and when those gases become excited by the electrons coming from the sun, they begin to light up. So what colors do we see? The most common color is green auroras. Green occurs between approximately 1 and 200 kilometers or 60 and 120 miles above the Earth. At that altitude in our atmosphere, we have a mixture of molecular nitrogen and atomic oxygen. The electrons interact with the nitrogen and then excite the oxygen at this altitude, which charges the oxygen up with energy for about a half a second. The oxygen then releases that energy as photons, or in this case, green light. Most people who have the fortune of witnessing the Northern Lights will see green auroras. They can be seen in Fairbanks, Alaska, most clear, dark nights, even when the forecast is showing low activity. More rare are the pink, purple, magenta, sometimes blue auroras at the very bottom border of the aurora. The dancing purples get extremely bright and move extremely quickly and are very visible to the human eye. These occur when solar storms get strong enough to push that energy closer to Earth, as close as 80 kilometers or 50 miles above the Earth. At this altitude, molecular nitrogen is dominant and relatively dense. The N2 reacts more quickly, giving a nearly instantaneous and very fast moving purple glow at the bottom edge of the aurora. They're pretty much an instant response within a billionth of a second after getting hit with an electron and causing the electron in orbit around the nucleus of the atom to jump up to a little higher level. It just jumps right back down and it gives off that light. The reds are quite rare. In fact, we might see those a couple of times a year. 
They occur at 120 miles or 200 kilometers above the Earth and up to 400 kilometers. At that altitude, oxygen atoms are dominant, but the atmosphere is thin and very spread out. This means those atoms of oxygen react, or charge up if you will, much slower. Therefore, reds aren't often visible at high latitude locations. But if the solar particle density is high enough, and the wind speeds are low enough, we can end up with an awesome all-red aurora at the top of the sky. Way up high, the uh, oxygen is activated by the collision with an electron of, that's raining in in the aurora, and it grabs the energy and it knocks a little electron in that atom to a higher orbital level, and typically it would jump back down, but for oxygen it doesn't. It, it can take up to two minutes at a really high altitude in the atmosphere, 400 miles above the surface of the Earth, or 200 miles, before it'll jump back down and in the process give off the energy that bumped it up as red light. So because it can be so variable, um, that blood red aurora is sort of smeared out over the sky. And that red aurora is the aurora that we hear about in antiquity. It was probably the first auroras that were seen in the Mediterranean. Because it's so high, you can see it from far, far away. I've been amazed at how full the sky is of light on a camera that I'm looking at, and then to go outside and it's red aurora and I see absolutely nothing. There are just stars galore and no structures in the sky. Unfortunately, our eyes typically don't see the red auroras. Not the color, not the light, not anything. The camera, on the other hand, has no issues with that. We've done an entire video on this topic, and if you'd like to learn more about the difference between what our eyes see and what the camera sees, check out the link here. Occasionally, when conditions are just right, we can sometimes observe a beautiful blue aurora. And that blue aurora happens typically around the beginning part of the season in the very early fall when we're just starting to get darkness in Fairbanks, or at the end of the season just before the daylight takes back over. If it's a super strong night, it can even happen in the middle of the winter if the aurora starts very early in the evening just after sunset, or lasts until just before sunrise. But we typically don't see this color aside from the edges of the season. And that's because around this time, even though the sun has set for us, it hasn't actually gotten truly dark in the sky or what we call astronomical darkness. To better understand that, when we first hit zero degrees at a sunset, that's what we consider civil sunset. Then as the sun drops between zero and six degrees, that's civil twilight, meaning it's starting to get twilight for us. Nautical twilight is between six and 12 degrees, and between 12 and 18 degrees is astronomical twilight. So what that means is when the sun is still between 12 and 18 degrees, it's dark to us and we can see most of the stars, but the sun is still reaching the very upper edges of our atmosphere. This energy combines with the plasma energy to create a blue glow that extends quite high into the sky in the form of rays. We call this sunlit aurora. Also, depending on the intensity of the aurora, sometimes colors will start to blend together. And when that happens, we start to get different colors like yellows and oranges and other various colors, just like if you were to mix a couple of different watercolors together. So what colors do you hope to see when you experience the Northern Lights for the first time? Go ahead and leave us a comment below letting us know. Also, if you have things you'd like to see covered in future videos, leave those in the comments as well, because we're always trying to answer your questions. One of the most common questions we've gotten recently is when's the best time to see the Northern Lights? And we're going to cover that in a future video, so make sure you're subscribed so that you don't miss out on that. If you enjoyed this video, guys, please do give it a big thumbs up. That helps us with the YouTube algorithm and it helps promote this video. That helps us be able to keep creating this content. So if you're enjoying it, always give us a thumbs up, leave us a comment. That kind of stuff really helps and we greatly appreciate it. Thanks so much, guys. And we appreciate you guys tuning in. Thanks, everybody. And we'll see you in the next video.